Welcome back to Footballology. So yesterday, a lot of people put out their opinion about their thoughts on this trade, sending Jamal Adams over to the Seattle Seahawks, and then obviously the Jets in return getting two first round picks, and Bradley McDougal, and a third round pick, and just, you guys see it, right? And so a lot of people felt like this was pretty much a King's Ransom, and the Jets pretty much made out like bandits. And really when you start to break it down and think about this trade, so one of my friends asked me, he's like, what are your thoughts on the trade? And when, so when you start to really break it down and get into the details of the trade and think about it, I don't think it's that bad of a trade, honestly. So I'm always been a big fan of that. If the guy, if a player or if a guy is going to take your team from this to this, then go get him. Why, why hesitate? Why even waste time? Go get that guy. Even if you're in the draft and you're trading and you're sitting back really far and you need to come up, uh, I guess prime example would be Atlanta going up and getting Julio. They didn't sit back and wait. They went up. They felt like this guy was going to be a big impact difference maker for them and their young quarterback. And they went out and did it. And the rest is history. So if you feel like a guy is really going to elevate your roster that much more and you're already a playoff contingent team, why not go you know, pull that trigger and why not go make that trade? Realistically, when you think about it, Seattle Seahawks are already in can play off contention just with Russell Wilson alone. So they found a flaw and they still had, you know, voids in their defense that they felt like they could fix. So this trade, when you really break it down and look about it, look at it, it's not that bad. Um, it looks bad on paper, obviously, but we don't know enough about Joe Douglas and the New York Jets and what they're going to do. I mean, right now, it doesn't seem like Adam Gates is going to be there much longer. I'm going to be surprised if he makes it out of this season realistically but i just don't see this trade being bad for seattle so when you think about it seattle are a playoff contending team so with the new playoff bracket 14 teams are going to make it into the playoffs so that's going to pick the the team that's going to pick the first that's still going to be a playoff contending team would be at 18. so now that pick right there is kind of eh, you know that's like the first wild card team so at that i'm pretty sure my math is right so right there at that point like you're starting to think okay that could be a decent player. That could be a good player right there, right? So that's worst case scenario. Best case, best case scenario because it's Seattle and because now you have Jamal Adams and you stay healthy and you get deeper into the playoffs. Now you'd be picking in the late 20s. So a lot of times the late 20s, a lot of teams don't want to pick there that, you know, made it to the AFC or NFC championship round or even the divisional round when you pick into that mid to late 20 spot. You're not even picking there most of the time. A lot of teams are starting to try and come back up and get quarterbacks, or a lot of teams are starting trying to come up and get other players that they want, so they at least have an option to go pick up that fifth year option. And you know, it's just they want that first round guy. They they don't feel like he's going to be there in the second round. They pick up pick, package up a deal just to come up and get him. So realistically, if you're Seattle and you're a playoff contending team and you're going to be winning ball games like that, and hopefully getting deep into the playoffs, which you hope that a guy like Jamal Adams really elevates your defense to allow you to do those things. Those first round picks look like more like second round picks, right? So you take that in consideration and about as far as like what Seattle could even possibly do at that point, getting deep into the playoffs. Now the New York Jets are picking in the late 20s. Woo. Okay, cool. And they're probably their own picks are probably going to be in the high teens or, you know, the low teens. And so at that point, now the Jets actual pick is better than the Seattle pick that they got. And like I said, Joe Douglas, we don't know what that's going to be like. Adam Gase might not even be there much longer. We don't know. We don't have enough history on Joe Douglas draft history to see if he's even going to be dangerous with these picks in his hand. Just because you give somebody, you know, the, mo the world's most strongest weapon or, you know, give them all this power doesn't mean they know how to control it or even use it correctly. Right. And then the second, I guess I'm going to say second point, but my other point on this whole trade too, John Schneider and Pete Carroll. A lot of their superstars, a lot of their beasts that we've come to know and love, they haven't paid that much money for. They haven't paid that many or their draft picks haven't been that high. They haven't gone out of the way to do much when you really, really think about it. You know, they got Marshawn Lynch for like, I think, a fourth or fifth round pick, and he turned out amazing for them. Russell Wilson, the quarterback that everyone loves, is a third round pick. Tyler Lockett is what, a fifth or sixth round pick? Bobby Wagner, second round pick. Cam Chancellor, I think, was a fourth round pick. Now, admit it, Earl Thomas was a first. Um, Earl was a beast. Yeah, I give you that. But a lot of the guys that are on the Seattle roster currently right now are in between the second to seventh round. And that's what they do. Richard Sherman was a fifth round pick, I think. And he was a stud for them. So Seattle has always been really quality at drafting guys between the second and the seventh round. 
they really don't need that first round pick. I really feel like they miss more on first round picks than they do on their second to seventh round. And I, I feel like that can go for a lot of teams out there. I think a lot of teams have more success between. I like, granted you have more, you know, rounds to pick from and you know, quality or the quantity is there. So you can hit more on that one than you could on the first round pick. But the first round pick is supposed to be a guaranteed shutdown, no questions asked starting guy that's gonna impact your roster in a positive way. And sometimes that doesn't happen. I think, okay, just to narrow the, the margin, if you will, I think you have a better chance of hitting on a second or third round pick than you do a first round pick. And just that's my personal opinion. And so I think John Snyder did the right thing. He knew that he had a playoff contending team regardless of anything because of Russell Wilson. He went out and boasted his defense getting Jamal Adams. Took two first round picks and a third and a player. All right, that's fine. But you're getting a star safety a superstar safety, a guy that can take the back end of that defense to the next level, which has been a Achilles heel since you lost Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas has been banged up. So now you go out and get a superstar safety. They can improve your secondary. You still got Bobby Wagner in the middle of the defense. Now the pass rush is probably going to be questionable this year. Hopefully they can get that thing going right. And then once that happens, then, then what? Seattle's picking or the Jets are picking at 27, 28 because of Seattle. Woo! Like, I don't see this being a bad deal at all for Seattle. It's the Jets that I'd be more concerned about. I think now it's one of those situations where it's like the Cleveland Browns situation where I have all this firepower at my disposal, but I don't know how to aim it. I don't know how to control it. Just it's too much power. So if you're in the New York Jets right now, you're sitting on what? Four first round picks Consider like your own, your own two plus the other two. In the next two seasons, or the next two off seasons, plus a third round pick, then you got Bradley McDougal on your back end. You got pieces, you got things to still work with. You, you just can't miss anymore. And so it's, I don't know, it's just gonna be interesting to see what happened from the Jets' perspective, more or less. Seattle, Seattle in, I'm, I'm excited. If I'm a Seattle fan, I'm ecstatic. We got way better. You take those two ones, that's fine. We got Jamal Adams. I just, I really, that's my personal opinion when it comes down to it. The Jamal Adams is going to improve the Seattle Seahawks. Can the New York Jets actually turn these first round picks into something quality? That's yet to be seen because we don't know enough about Joe Douglas and his draft history. But we know John Schneider doesn't miss when it comes to late round guys. And that's just what he does best. So that's all I have for you guys. I really hope you guys like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about the Jamal Adams trade. Do you feel like the Jets got, got away, you know, made out like bandits in the night? Do you feel like Seattle made out like bandits? Do you feel like it's a fair trade on both ends? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you're not a footballologist yet, go and subscribe to the YouTube channel today and become a footballologist. And stay safe, football fans.